I'm Jenny with the Diary of a Real Housewife.com. Today I want to share with you a recipe that you have to have on your Thanksgiving table. So today's recipe is Dutch apple pie. It is the perfect dessert for the holidays and it has rave reviews on my blog. All of my readers love it and I can't wait to share it with you today. First you're going to start with a pie crust. Get it out in your pie pan here. Uh, whether it's homemade or store bought, doesn't matter. Um, if you do want a homemade recipe, I'll make sure to put that link in the description to my blog. I have a really simple homemade pie crust recipe that's really good that you're going to like. Alright, we have our mixing bowl and our apples. I have about 8 cups of Granny Smith apples cored, peeled, and sliced really thin, just like this. Um, you can dice them up into bite-sized pieces. Really, it's just preference on how you like it. This is honestly the only time-consuming part about this recipe. It's really that easy. So let's pour them in here to our mixing bowl. Make sure we get every last one. All right, on top of this, I'm going to pour one tablespoon of lemon juice. This really will just help your apples not to get brown, but it also kind of counteracts with that sugar that you're going to add. All right, next I'm going to go in with the sugar. I'm going to use three-fourths cup. Sugar can really be your preference though. Uh, some of my readers have said it's too sugary, others have said it's absolutely perfect. So maybe just start with less if you don't have a sweet tooth like me and then you can always add more later. All right. And then I'm just gonna put one fourth a cup of brown sugar. Get it all mixed in. So for me, apple pie is really just that staple to the holidays. Um, we serve it other times during the year but I cannot think of a Christmas or a Thanksgiving that went by that I did not make or even buy an apple pie. All right, I'm gonna add one fourth cup of flour. So the fourth cup of flour will help thicken up your insides here once they start cooking. And then here I have cinnamon and nutmeg. It's a teaspoon of cinnamon and just a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg. Again, if you're not really sure how much you like these kind of flavors, go ahead and add a little bit less and then mix it up and just try an apple. You want to make sure it's really nice and mixed and all those apples are coated full of flavor. This already smells so good and I haven't even baked it yet. So for the filling, that's it. Easy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my pie crust. Yes, I am pouring all of this into my pie crust, all eight cups. Um, I like my pie really full, but if you are more of like a fan of that crust, then you can try a little bit less. So one thing I love about cooking um, you can really just kind of make it your own and do your own thing, make it how you like. Alrighty, so in this same pan, I'm going to go ahead and put this apple pie to the side. But all my apples are out of the mixing bowl, I'm going to start in on my crumble. I have a cup of flour in here, just a tablespoon of cinnamon. Next, I'm going to add both a half a cup of brown sugar and a half a cup of white sugar. Then you're going to want one stick of butter, diced up just like this. You want to make sure that your butter is right out of the fridge. You don't want it sitting out on the counter too long to get soft. For a crumbly topping, I like to have my butter uh, pretty firm so I can really get it mixed up and crumbled. Alright, so 
ditch the spoon. We're not using this anymore. It's time for our hands. Uh, just make sure your hands are washed. I washed mine obviously before I started cooking. So let's get started. Kind of what I'm going to do in here is like a pinching motion as I mix. Uh, I really want that butter to start to break up and to crumble and then as it gets coated with the sugar and the brown sugar and the flour, it will turn into that nice little crumble that we're going to add on top. Keep pinching and separating that butter until it kind of forms a smaller crumble. They may start out rather large, um, but I just keep pinching, separating until it's all a nice small crumble and you don't want any dust left at the bottom, or at least not on top of your pie. That butter is going to melt and so that topping is going to be really moist. And if you have some kind of dry pieces of flour, I just go ahead and leave it out or get it mixed in with that butter. Alright, you know it's done when it feels like that moon sand, you know like that the kids play with? Uh, my kids have some downstairs that they love. But it has like a really crumbly texture to it. Perfect. I'm a mess. Alright, so time to add this on top of our pie. Take it by the handfuls and as I top it, I kind of just loosen it up so we don't have big chunks again on top of the pie. It's all kind of spread out evenly. I'm going to bake this in the oven for about 50 to 55 minutes at 375. Until it's nice and warm, your crust is cooked, everything's bubbly and smelling amazing. Once it's done, just serve it up with some ice cream, whipped cream, and enjoy. Let's put it in. Alright, Dutch apple pie. This smells so good. You are going to love it. Serve it with whipped cream, ice cream, just how it is with that brown sugar butter crumble on top. You're going to love it for Thanksgiving, Christmas dessert, any other day. It's awesome. So give it a try. Make sure you click those links down in the description. You'll find the recipe on my blog so you can print it out, save it for later. Also like the video and subscribe so you know every time I post. Next week I'll have a recipe for you that's another perfect pairing for your Thanksgiving or Christmas tables. And we'll see you guys next time.